Alright folks, let's go over the materials for the build. The first things you're going to need is an empty 12 ounce soda can. We're going to be using three in total for this video. The next thing you're going to need is a tea light candle. Once you've got your tea light candle, you also want to grab some kind of knife. I'm going to use an X-Acto knife. It may be a good idea to have some needle nose pliers as well. You're also going to want to grab some 100% cotton cloth. T-shirt, bandanas, anything will work as long as it's 100% cotton. Then you're also going to need some kind of fuel source. This is extra virgin olive oil. You can use vegetable oil, also rendered fats, and even alcohol will work. Alright, let's get started on the build. Alright, so this first one is super, super simple. A lot of people have probably seen this before, but I run across a lot of people who haven't. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our can, and on the back side, we're going to come down maybe an inch or so, and we're going to draw a line straight-ish down. It doesn't have to be perfect. From there, we're going to come to about the halfway point of the can and draw a straight line across down here on the bottom to about the other halfway point of the can, like so. And then we're going to do the same thing up here on the top. Nothing has to be too scientific. Now we're going to come in with whatever cutter you're going to use. Again, I'm just going to use an X-Acto knife. I'm going to punch a hole right here in that center and cut this can right down our line. Like so. And then we're going to cut long ways on our other lines. There we go, we've cut all of our lines. All right, now that we've got our cuts made, we're gonna grab our needle nose pliers. We're gonna use these for part of this step just because these edges are sharp. Younger kids definitely get supervision, at least permission before you attempt this, and remember that these edges can be quite sharp. So now that those cuts are made, we're just gonna grab this with our needle nose pliers and bend it back both sides. Just like so. Now, depending on the can you're using, you may have this little uh, hump down here in the bottom. You can just leave it as is, but it does kind of make an unsturdy little space for your candle to set on. So what I like to do is just come in with my pliers and just kind of push that down a little bit. I'll just use the nose to push and flatten that out some. And what that actually does is it creates a nice little bowl that your candle will set in nice and securely. Say so not a necessary step, but it's something you can do. So I've just pushed that in a little bit. It doesn't have to be pretty. Okie doke. So now we're going to get our lovely, ooh, I think that's lavender scented candle. Get that guy lit. Maybe. There we go. And we're just going to set this guy right inside there. There we go. You can manipulate these sides however you want. You can neaten it up a little bit. If you leave them in some, it does help radiate the light out a little bit. Or you can pull them all the way out of the way. Or you can cut them off altogether. That's totally up to you. I generally leave them on there just because they do reflect a little more light. So the benefit of these guys, again, is they give off so much more light than just your normal tea light. And it gives directional light, so you can really put it where you want it to be. If you were to sit down and read your favorite book, you can just have that book right in front of your uh, little light. And I guarantee you, you can read without any problems whatsoever. It gives a lot of light, and it gives a lot more than the tea light alone. Alright guys, let's get started on our second build. 
Same principle, a little bit of a different design. What we're going to do first is the same thing. We're going to come in, in the center of our can, we're going to make a nice mark down that center, like so. We're not going to come too far down here. This is going to end up being a reservoir. So you want to leave yourself about an inch or two inches down there. And then we're going to draw our line over again to about the halfway point. It's a good thing about this, nothing has to be super scientific. This top line I'm going to extend right up to the, where this little shoulder is. And I'm going to use that shoulder kind of as my reference line. And just pick out different areas in the can, like design areas, whatever, just to get your lines kind of evened up. There we go. Now, what we're going to do a little differently on this one is we're going to go ahead and extend some side lines down to meet like that. So these outside lines on this design are going to meet up. Okay, now we're going to come in again with our knife, whether it be an X-Acto knife, a uh, razor knife, just a normal pocket knife, whatever, and we're again going to cut this out. Following our lines as closely as possible. Hopefully you've got something like that, and hopefully you haven't bent and beat up your can too much. Alright, now we're going to take our second can, and what we're going to do is we're going to measure this from the bottom to where it's maybe about a quarter of an inch or so up above the bottom lip of this can. So this made me a little mark right there. So ultimately we want the height of this to be just slightly taller than the height of this so it sticks up just a little bit. So now that we've got that reference we're going to go ahead and mark our can all the way around semi-accurately doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. Now we're going to cut that out. Can's getting a little fiddly, so I'm going to switch to some scissors now. There we go. Alright, so now you should have a nice little cup. We're going to flip that over. And I'm going to use my X-Acto knife to just put a little divot right in the center of this bottom. There we go. You can see, hopefully you can see, after just a little bit of work I have started to get through there. I've got a hole through there. You can continue doing that with this, with your knife or whatever if you want. What you're looking to make is about a quarter of an inch or so hole in that bottom. For time's sake, I'm going to use a drill. You do not have to use a drill. You can definitely do this with a knife. Just keep drilling all the way through until you get the hole you want. You can see I've already enlarged that just with a couple swipes. But for time's sake, I'm going to use a drill. All right, guys, now hopefully you should have your hole. Again, we're shooting for about a quarter of an inch or so. Next, we're gonna take a roughly one inch by two inch piece of our top that we cut off of this can. And what we're gonna do is we're going to roll this up Okay, and I cannot stress enough on this step, folks, to be super careful with this metal. Be very, very careful. It is sharp. But we want to roll that up to where it will fit snugly down into our little hole here. And it's easy enough to adjust. If you get a little too small, just bend it back out some. And just keep tweaking it until it will slide right down in your hole. Okay, once you've got your piece of metal bent, now we're going to take some of our cotton fabric. Again, this is just an old t-shirt. And I've cut it probably about one inch 
It's a one inch by maybe six or seven inch rectangle. And I did cut it slightly smaller than one inch on this end. And the main reason I did that was just to help feed it through. It tapers a little bit. But we're going to take our little uh, pipe that we made and we're going to stick this wick through there. Just like so. And then we're going to put everything down into the top. Like so. Oops, we've brought in our little top piece. We've got our bottom piece that we just put together. And we've also brought in our olive oil. One thing I like to do here first is I like to pull out a good little bit of that wick and dip that down into the olive oil. And this just kind of helps to pre-prime that top part. And then we're going to pull this down to where we have maybe about a quarter of an inch or so sticking up. And then what we're going to do, I like to come in with some scissors and just cut a few little notches in around this down here at the bottom and this just kind of makes little relief points that make this next step a little bit easier. So we're just going to take our olive oil, dump some in here, put in our wick and our topper and these little relief points, the reason I put those in there is it allows me to kind of pinch and push this top section in to this other half. And we're going to push that down to where it's seated nicely in the other piece. So now what that's done is this wick is in here soaking up that olive oil. I like to swish it around a little bit. Okay, so much like the tea light, uh, the fact that this is in the can just really helps to radiate and push that light out. So there you go folks, both of these are very easy to make. But the main principle we want you to take away from this is thinking outside the box. In a survival or uh, emergency situation, let's say you've had a big storm, the power's out, maybe you don't have a candle. Uh, if you don't have a candle, you can fashion this. I'm sure you've got a, a piece of cotton somewhere in your home and hopefully some form of oil. Again, you can use oils, fats, uh, liquid paraffin, all sorts of stuff will work for this. If you don't have that candle, you can fashion something else. If you do have the candle, you can make the candle more efficient. This tea light setting on a table alone gives off a little bit of light, but with the reflectivity of this can, it gives off way more light. You can easily read by it do small chores by it. If you have one in each room, you'll be amazed at the amount of light you get from just the addition of this can. And this may seem so trivial, but the extra little bit of time spent fashioning this little lantern improves the performance of this tea light candle so much. It's crazy how much it improves it. So don't scoff at this stuff and just kind of be like, well, that's nifty, but it, it seems kind of trivial. It's really not. Um, really if you've got the things you need, if you can do something to exploit the benefits even more, there's no reason not to do it. So this is just kind of a play on getting you to think outside the box a little bit and just be prepared. When you learn this stuff, you've got it in the old library in your brain and it's there. It might snap and you think, oh, this could really save the day. So I hope you took something away from this. These are fun to build, easy to build. Uh, easy to build in stressful situations. This is, you know, this is like six cuts. That's it. Easy breezy. Actually, it's one, two, three, four, five cuts. Super easy to do and really, really improves the performance of what would be a pretty mediocre light source. So have this in the old brain depository. Thank you all so much for checking out our videos. Take care.